the divisibility by 9 and 3 this is very interesting because we know uh, to check whether the given number like this is divisible by 9 or not or by 3 or not what we can do we can simply add all the digits and see whether they are multiple of 9 or 3 or not if the sum of digit is multiple of 9 that is if sum of digit is divisible by 9 then the whole number is divisible by 9 otherwise not same goes for 3 nothing changed now the question is why this works what is the proof of this thing so we will going to look at the proof and we are going to prove why this works so now uh, i'll be taking a smaller example you can prove it uh, you can generalize it this is not something uh, very hard to generalize uh, the integer is 1 2 3 4 5 and we have to take modulo 9 now if you if you might you might have studied a uh, number system decimal binary hexadecimal or octal number system you know uh, each these digits uh, this whole number can be represented as this that is the first digit from right to left it would be given a zeroth index so 5 would be multiplied with base raised to power 0 since this is a, a decimal base system so 5 would be multiplied with 10 raised to power 0 4 is at index 1 so 4 would be multiplied with 10 raised to power 1 so goes for other number it would be multiplied 3 digit 3 is at second index so it would be multiplied with 10 raised to power 2 2 into 10 raised to power 3 1 into 10 raised to power 4 if you apply all this and then add you would get this number i'm just writing down uh, in the base 10 format now uh, what interesting thing is that 10 to the power 4 can be uh, written as 9999 plus 1 10 to the power 3 can be written as 999 plus 1 10 to the power 2 can be written as 99 plus 1 and 10 to the power 1 can be written as 9 plus 1 like this so what interesting about this is is that 10 to the power d can be written as d times 9 plus 1 so 10 to the power 4 is 4 times 9 plus 1, 10 to the power 3 9, uh, is 9, uh, 3 times 9 plus 1 and so goes for other things. So to calculate modulo of this with 9, we can calculate modulo of this expression, mod 9, right? Uh, and I've transformed this equation into this equation. Now you'd see if I apply modulo operator on this thing, it would become 0 plus 1 which would result into 1 same goes for this since this is multiple of 9 so it would return, uh, result into 0 plus 1 it would be 1 so goes for this so goes for this it was already 1 uh, so the the digits inside the bracket all would be converted into 1 because all are multiple of 9 plus 1 right and multiple of 9 when you would take modulo with 9 would result into 0 so all these would uh, result into 0 0 0 and then 0 plus 1 would become 1 1 1 1 and finally when you multiply 1 into 1 it would result into 1 2 into 1 would result into 1 3 into 1 and so on so finally what you would see is that this is actually digits only the whole expression would be converted into sum of digits only so to find modulo of this the whole number with 9 all we have to do is take the digit sum and then take modulo with 9 if the modulo comes out to be 0 that means the whole number is divisible by 9 so this is why this is the proof why digit sum uh, uh, taking modulo with digit sum of a number is uh, and checking it with modulo 9 or 3 is enough uh, for the divisibility of that number with 9 and 3 same goes for 3 because 9 uh, any multiple of 9 is also divisible by uh, 3 so all these would result into 0 if even if you take 3 here so it would again be uh, 1 1 1 1 all this would transform into 1 and finally all you would be left are digits so to test the divisibility of any integer with 9 and 3 what we would do we would simply take their digit sum and check whether they are uh, leaving remainder 0 or not so this was proof for uh, divisibility by 9 and 3 after we have studied this here comes a question what is the uh, expression sum modulo 3 we can uh, calculate it easily because now we know or uh, to find uh, 
modulo 3 all we have to do is take digit sum and then find modulo 3 so 1 4 2 will result into 6 uh, 7 7 modulo 3 is 1 uh, 4 5 3 uh, is 12 12 modulo 3 is 0 because 12 is multiple of 3 and this again is multiple of 3 because our digit sum is multiple of 3 because 4 2 6 and 3 9 9 is multiple of 3 so 0 uh, 16 16 would be 1 uh, modulo 3 and so on for other numbers so even calculating modulo 3 we can simply take their modulo beforehand and then add the result is uh, 5 modulo 3 which is 2 now the same goes for 9 try to find out what is the result modulo 9 uh, keep taking the modulo before addition and then finally calculate the result to take modulo with 9 all you have to do is uh, add their digits and find modulo 9 the result would be something like this first number is actually 7 7 modulo 9 is 7 the second number is i guess uh, 12 12 modulo 9 is 3 and so on after adding that it would become 29 modulo 9 which comes out to be 2 again now the next question this oh sorry not next question but modulo uh, exponentiation what it says is that if a and b are congruent to each other then a raised to power k is congruent to b raised to power k under modulo n is uh, if you have two integers which are congruent to each other uh, then finding a raised to power k modulo n is same as finding b raised to power k modulo n and how it's gonna help us in finding solution uh, this shows why it is so important now 16 is congruent to 1 modulo 3 because 16 leaves remainder 1 and 1 leaves remainder 1 of course so if someone asks you to calculate 16 raised to power 5 modulo 3 you know that 16 is actually congruent to 1 under modulo 3 so you can replace 16 with 1 and instead of calculating 16 raised to power 5 modulo 3 you can calculate 1 raised to power 5 modulo 3 and you know 1 raised to power 5 is 1 so 1 modulo 3 would be 1 so 16 raised to power 5 modulo 3 would be 1 so this is how useful this formula is if a and b are congruent to each other then a raised to power k is uh, a raised to power k modulo in modulo n is same as b raised to power k modulo n now let's prove this fact again uh, we know that a, since a and b are congruent to each other we have previously seen then then a can be written as n p plus b right now to prove this fact uh, a raised to power n is can be written as n p plus b sorry a raised to power k can be written as n p plus b raised to power k right now what we would do uh, i would apply binomial expansion on this thing and the n p thing i am writing it down as a so a is actually n p so now we have a plus b raised to power k if you uh, expand this uh, expand this expression using binomial expansion then you would get uh, kc0 a raised to power k into b raised to power 0 plus kc1 a raised to power k minus 1 into b raised to power 1 so on till kck into b raised to power k into a raised to power 0 a raised to power 0 is 1 so i am not writing that down except this expression this term every other term would contain a right and every a since a is actually np so every other term except this last term would contain n inside in terms of multiplication now since every term contains n if you take modulo of this whole expression every other term would return uh, would become zero because they are multiple of n so this 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 every single term would turn out to be zero except this one so that is why a raised to power k would be equal to kck into b raised to power k now kck is actually one so it would turn out to be b raised to power k so that is why a raised to power k is equals to b raised to power k or equivalent to b raised to power k under modulo n it was easy to prove using binomial expansion now that we have proven that fact let's solve this problem you, are, you have to find 29 raised to power 10 modulo 3 try, uh, try to solve it yourself and we'll be continuing in 3 2 1 now uh, 29 raised to power 10 modulo 3 we know that uh, 
a raised to power k is same as b raised to power k if a and b are congruent under uh, modulo 3 so 29 is equivalent to or congruent to 2 modulo 3 so instead of calculating 29 raised to power 10 we would calculate 2 raised to power 10 2 raised to power 10 is actually 1024 1024 modulo 3 you can calculate by simply adding the digits digit sum is actually 7 so 7 modulo 3 is 1 so 29 raised to power 10 is actually 1 this you can calculate in like 10 or 15 second without using pen and paper if you know the right thing the right algorithms now the second question this question is taken from one of my favorite sites where, where I practice my uh, mathematics brilliant.org so you can go to that site and there are really good articles about mathematical uh, algorithms like Euler's torsion function and other stuff so the question is find 2 raised to power 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 modulo 7 pause the video try to solve it and I'm going to continue in 3 2 1 now the important thing is that uh, you might be trying to find out Mod, uh, applying a raised to power k is equal to b raised to power k thing but here first we have to modify this solution and then you can use that you know that uh, this thing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 is actually uh, equivalent to 0 modulo 3 that is this whole thing is divisible by 3 so what is going to happen is that 2 raised to power 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 is actually equal to 2 uh, raised to power 3 into 4 1 1 5 2 2 6 3 so if you have an expression of a raised, a raised to power b into c uh, i mean b into c are the uh, powers of a so a raised to power b into c what you can do is you can calculate a raised to power b and then you can calculate the resultant raised to power c so this is uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 can be uh, written as 2 raised to power 3 into 4 1 1 5 2 2 6 3 so I am calculating 2 raised to power 3 first and then I would calculate this result so 2 raised to power 3 is actually 8 raised to power 4 1 1 5 double 2 6 3 now 8 is actually congruent to 1 modulo 7 so this expression would become 1 raised to power 4 1 1 5 2 2 6 3 which is actually 1 so this was uh, this is the solution for this expression 2 raised to power 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 modulo 7 and I think this is enough yes this is uh, for this lecture and I know there are a lot of things that we have uh, studied in this lecture if there is some problem just ask in the comments and if you are having any problem just take an example I mean even if you are uh, not having any problem just go there use your pen and paper and just whatever you have learned just take example like 10 20 50 examples and just work with them especially with uh, uh, Euclid division lemma and Euclid division algorithm because that helps a lot in while you are working with modu uh, modular arithmetic uh, apart from uh, that uh, the website that I mentioned brilliant.org is a really good resource if you are uh, there for number theory and other mathematical algorithms just go and check out their web website there is a lot to learn from there and after that we have covered mostly from the uh, modular arithmetic uh, the important thing that is that remains is modulo multiplicative inverse that we, we would be covering in, uh, in another videos and since we have covered enough to solve the extra questions that were remaining uh, that I was not able to make videos for because uh, and to solve those problem you would require the knowledge of modular arithmetic now since we have learned about modular arithmetic so I am free to make videos for those questions so I'll be taking videos for uh, problems and basically making uh, a tutorial for those problems so yep uh, till then just take an example learn as much as you can go through that website that I've told you and take uh, take as ma many examples as you can work out those and build your knowledge base for uh, modular arithmetic till then so till next time we meet thank you guys for watching and yep keep coding thank you